think we're live. Let me see. Uh, can you? All right, yeah. Cool. Yeah. So we're live right now. Okay. So yeah, I just started the meeting and just gonna wait for people to start coming. Okay, well, I mean, seeing as we're here, I might as well get the data set we're going to be using. So I'll just show everyone where they can easily get data set. This is a website called Kaggle.com. So, oops. Yeah, so if you look here, uh, you can find this. Uh, you can find this link yourself if you look for it, but we're gonna be using a Titanic data set. Whoops. <laughs> All right, we're gonna yeah, yeah, we're gonna be using a Titanic data set for this. So basically, data set regarding essentially like uh, the features of all the people who were on the Titanic. So let's see that. Well, I mean, I already extracted it but you know I'll just do it again for the sake of demonstration okay reading 13 okay So there's that. Now we can go here. Great projects, meeting 13. There we go. Okay. Um so oh yeah. I will post the attendance for my bad. I forgot to Make that. Let me make that real quick, and I'll post that right now. Um, yeah, we can start with the simple presentation. It's nothing. It's just a few slides, but yeah. Okay. So welcome everybody who's just starting to come in. Um, I'm making the attendance form right now. So give me a second to do that and I'll post it in chat. form in chat. Uh, make sure to fill it out. Yeah, okay. So, um, let's get straight into it. I mean, this is just a, you know, simple thing, but I'm just going to be talking through it all. So, uh, this is just essentially, this is uh, the sigmoid function. So, s of x is equal to 1 over 1 plus e to the negative x. So this ed function is going to be very useful when we're talking about logistic regression. Now, first, we need to explain what logistic regression is. And we talked about uh, linear regression last week where we were trying to predict uh, a value, a continuous value, right? Um, where we were using a linear model to predict that value. Um, with logistic regression, it's a bit different because we're not predicting a continuous value. We're predicting um, at least two, you know, just separate values. Like, for example, with a data set we're going to be working with, the Titanic data set, we're going to be using the features of all the passengers to figure out whether somebody survived or didn't. 
based on like uh, their age, their gender, their family members, you know, stuff like that. So we're, we're going to be working with all that. Um, so yeah, the you know, how this function comes into play. Let's see. So we, the problem with linear regression, we could use, you know, linear regression when we're talking about when we want to predict values such as these. But the problem would be that say we had a line, let's say we had a line that, you know, that passed right through here and then went all the way here. So the problem there would be that even though that's the best fit of the line, the best fit the line can have, would be that if say we wanted to find the value here, that would be outside of our range of uh, values, which would be zero and one. So, and this is the probability that it's one, and this is the probability that it's zero. So any point above this means that yes, it's true or it's one. And any point above below this means that no, it's false or it's yep, any point below this value means that it's false and it's a zero or it's more likely to be a zero. So yeah, um, yeah. So the problem with linear regression or most other functions is that you get some values that are outside of the zero and one range, which obviously doesn't work, right? Because you can't have, yeah, you, you just can't have that. You need to, this is about the probability between z, the value being zero and one. So this function is special because every value in uh, the range of this function across every value of x is going to be between zero and one, not inclusive. Um, so yeah, um, now there are different types of logistic regression. Uh, we're just gonna be covering the basic binary logistic regression where it's just zero, one, true or false, but you could also expand this to multinomial logistic regression, which is, you know, multiple categories for what you're trying to predict, and then, you know, things like that. Um, logistic regression is a pretty easy to implement method, especially in, you know, the context of other machine learning methods. Um, it also works well for data sets that are linearly separable, that are put into nice, uh, yeah, you know, that are just easily separable by the algorithm, but um, it also, you know, you can also have useful insights on the data using logistic regression. Um, there are some disadvantages though, like I said, it pre um, linear logistic regression does not predict a continuous outcome, that's what linear regression, or you know, not just linear, but for example, that's what linear regression is for, when you want a continuous value and not just separate categories of values. Um, yeah, um, there are, yeah, yeah, we can go into more detail, but this is about uh, what we really need to know. So, um, there's that. Now, yeah, let me know if there's any issues with the audio or anything like that. But, okay, so now we're going to start actually, you know, working with code, working with Python. So, um, let's start, let's start by importing all our packages. So there's a lot of packages we have to import. I'll explain them all along the way, but um, first there's the obvious one, import numpy as num np, import pandas as pd, pd, import matplotlib, dot pyplot as plt. This is a new one, I think, uh, seaborn, but this is essentially um, a good way to explain it would be an expansion upon, seaborn is matplotlib basically, but you can do a lot more with it and it's a lot easier to do. 
a lot more with it. It's kind of hard to explain, but you know, you'll see. Um, yeah, so from sklearn, so we covered sklearn last class, I think. That's our uh, machine learning package. So we'll import trait. Yep, there we go. Um, is it? Oh, sklearn. There we go. There we go. Okay. Um, logistic regression, there we go. And then from sklearn.metric. And don't get too overwhelmed by all this, you know. Like I said, I'll explain it as we go along. Classification report. There we go. And um, if you are using a Jupyter notebook like me, you would also need this line to make sure all the plots. Ooh, what's this indicating? Yeah, that shouldn't be anything to worry about. Okay, so first thing we're gonna do, um, we have downloaded our data sets into here, and we're just gonna be using this, so we can delete these two. Usually, um, we would just use this one for the training, and then the other one, the other data set for the testing, but I, I wanna cover actually using train test split with just one data set, so let's just rename this as Titanic. Just, yeah. So, we can say Titanic is equal to p.read csv <coughs> and then Titanic.csv. Alright, um, and now we're just going to be using the pandas functions we've learned before. Like we can say titanic dot head to see just the basic overview of uh, what what kind of data set we have here. So let's see here passenger ID. That's just you know the idea of the passenger. That probably doesn't have anything to do with <laughs> whether they survived or not. Survived is obviously what we want to predict. P class is the class of the passengers that could have something to do with it. Name definitely doesn't have anything to do with it. <coughs> Sorry. Sex, age, sib sp. Um, if you go back to the Kaggle website, I'm not going to go back there, but it's there. It has the description where this is the siblings or partner. This is basically who they're traveling with or how many people they're traveling with. P-A-R-C-H. Uh... I might need to look back to see which one this one was, but um, that's their ticket number, that's their fare, and this is their cabin number. Okay, so we can also use the info method. So we have, we have this here, passenger ID, you know. So we have int, 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 object, object, float. Yeah, that all makes sense. Give me a second. All right. So um, yeah, we now we know what kind of type, what type of variable are in each of these columns, and and actually we can see here that there are eight um, eight hundred ninety one rows normally, but we can see that there's some null values in age as well as cabin, so we're gonna need to take care of those later. And we'll cover how to do that, but anyway, let's do that. Describe, yeah. So this is also useful to get an intuition about what your data is like. So, okay. So you know you have the count. Again, we talked about that. This is a few null values here. You've got the mean of the values. Oh well, this is going to be really useful. But yeah, so. This is a pretty useful thing to see to see what your data is like. But now um, let's get. I mean, we already covered it before, but oh yeah, Titanic dies null. Well, actually, first let's cover what type um, is null does. So is null is a pandas function where it creates a separate uh, data frame that only has true and false variables. And if that value, uh, the corresponding value in Titanic 
is not null, then it's just going to be true. Like, for example, look at this. Um, if we go up here, the cabin of index 1 is null, or nan. You know, same thing. So that means that it's true. Oh, my bad. So if it's, um, if it's null, that means it's true. And if it's not null, that means it's false. Whoops, got that mixed up there. <laughs> but yeah, um, and we can actually show this in a heat map. So heat map, we've got this handy function to check which, um, which of our data points is null. And we can see that. Wow, there's a lot of null values in the cabin section, but we won't be using that for training our model and for we would, that won't be one of the parameters we're going to be using. So we don't we don't need to worry about this, but we do need to worry about age because uh, that's quite a lot of uh, values that are null there. So um, yeah, and if you're using uh, if you're not using Jupyter Notebook, you just need to do plt dot show to show this. Same thing, yeah. Um, yeah, so what we can do for this is um, replace each of these null values with the average age of every passenger. Obviously, there are better ways to do this, like finding each of the classes and finding all their ages and then take, doing the averages of those. There's more precise ways to do it. Or, you know, if the number of sm is small enough, you can just get rid of that null data altogether but you know this is a nice lesson just replacing data so let's give variable age and titanic age dot mean so as you can probably guess that's just getting the mean of everything and let's print age oh we have a problem here you don't uh, register as people people's ages as you know decimal points look at this so instead what we're gonna do I mean we're gonna keep this but we're just gonna put round around it round around it okay yeah so the average age on the Titanic is 30 then now what we're gonna do is you're gonna use a very useful method a very useful pandas method so we could say Titanic age is equal to Titanic age, and we'll use this dot fill an a. We'll put h here. So what's this? What this does? We could press uh, Shift Tab actually if you're using Jupyter Notebook, and now oh, yeah, that's easy as that. Fill an a or nan values using the specified method. So you can actually, you know, uh, put a method in here. We talked about, uh, what was it? I forgot the name. The, ooh. Wait, Rahi, do you know the name of that? Not the functions, the mini functions. What were the name of those? Oh, well, it doesn't matter. But, yeah, do you remember the names of those... Uh, no, no, I don't think it was those. The like the the one line functions. You know those? Yeah, 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 yeah. You can you can use <laughs> that's what I'm thinking of. Yeah, because uh, it's pretty useful here actually most of the time. Um, but yeah, so you can use you could just put a normal variable there, or you can just use lambda functions. But yeah, so um, I'll copy paste this so we can see how our data has changed. So now, um, if you look here, there are no null values left in the age class. Or the age, age, would that be row? Age, no, age column. There we go, there we go. Yeah, so compare that to here. Now we just filled all these values in. Easy as that. So um, there we go. Um, now. Let's look back at our data. Or we can just do another Titanic that head. Now we want all of our data to be in some sort of numerical form, right? Well, since we won't be using something like passenger ID, name, ticket, or cabin, we don't really need those. But 
what we are looking at are sex and embarked. So we need to figure out how to turn those into numerical values. So we can do this. We can do sex is equal to PD dot get dummies. So oops. Okay. Now let's look at let's take a look at what this uh, method does. Converts a categorical value into dummy indicator variables. So this column is a categorical categorical um, val value because it's only two options, you know, male or female. It's not like we talked before. Um, it's not a continuous value. Like, I mean, I guess this isn't really continuous either, but you get my point. So now we can say, now we can see what this is. Now, if you look here, it separated this column into female and male. And whenever it's male, it's a one here and a zero here, and vice versa. We could also do that with embarked. Ooh, God, I can't spell. PD dot, whoops, get dummies. Um... And then we can say Titanic embarked. Good. All right. And then, yeah. And then now it separated these um, S, C, and well, we don't see Q, but there is a Q. Yep. It separated all those into this. So, yeah, there's that. <coughs> Now we can concatenate these together. Concat, and then we could say, okay, yeah, we can put these all in the array. Titanic, sex, embarked. Oh no 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 no! Whoops. Oh god, I missed. Okay, wait wait. Let me run all these again. I miss. Uh, um. There we go. Then you can say axis is equal to one. So now if we show Titanic head, we've got a much larger. We got a much larger data frame but that's a big problem isn't it because well look we got a bunch of redundant ones we've already I mean this these two columns are already redundant and then um, we've got a few useless columns as well like cabin ticket name you know things like that passenger ID so let's drop those that drop embarked name ticket and cabin. Whoopsies, cabin. I cannot spell. Okay. So now we dropped all those values that we don't need, and then we've got all the values that we that are useful to us. So now, now that we have that, um, now we could separate those into x and y. So we can say x is equal to Titanic, and then um, we can yeah. So we can just uh, write down the columns here within this array so p class so we want to do everything in the everything aside from survived in this x variable oops a sid sp arch fair female male c Yes. Okay. What did I do wrong? Uh, 
Oh, whoops. There we go. Miswrote that. <laughs> and then Y. Well, I mean, this is uh, just the basic, you know, X is the input, Y is the output, independent variable, dependent variable. You know, we're taking all these as our input, and then we're going to figure out whether they survived or not. So we could put survived. Easy. And, um, okay, now let's go back to our import statements for a little bit. So, as you can see, we've imported something called train test split. So, I'll quickly explain this. Um, when you're training a model, you don't want to use all your data to train that model because you want to know what would happen if you were if you were using it for you know other data so let's say you fit your data to all the data you fit your data here and it was great fit perfect fit maybe what you know 99 percent accuracy so that might seem good to you but what if you use it on some real world data and that just isn't the case what if the real world data what if there were some exceptions anomalies within the data that you used so you don't know what the real world data is like. So what you're gonna do is split your data into a training test, a training split and a test split. Um, usually there's a validation split, but we're not gonna cover that yet. We'll, we'll go into that later. But um, the training split is just used for training the data you want, or training the model. Sorry, and. A test split, you've never introduced this uh, test uh, portion of the data to the model, and then you're going to see how well the data would, per how well the model, my goodness, how well the model would perform with completely new data, essentially. So that's why it's useful. So now we have to actually wait. No, um, I can do this. So I'm just going to go the lazy way out. So we have this here, uh, where they write it. Oh, there we go. <laughs> Easy. So I just copy pasted it from the documentation there. So instead of writing all this X train, X test, Y train, Y test, train test split, Y, X, Y, you know. So I'll just do test size is 0 0.3. So um, the test portion of this data is going to be 30% of all the data. That's a pretty reasonable split, and I'll just do random state 101. So um, we have that down. Now, now this is the easier part, you know. Actually, like uh, writing this down is simpler portion of this uh, lesson. So x train, and then whoops, whoops, whoops. X train, Y train. So now that we fit the model to our X train and Y train data sets. Um, so now we can do, we could say our prediction is model dot predict X test. And now Let's go back up here. Oh, I forgot to mention. So when we said logistic regression model is equal to logistic regression right here, that would be this uh, package that we imported. So now what we're about to do is we're going to we're about to use classification report, which is from sklearn.metrics. Um, so now we've had we've gotten our model and we've gotten our prediction. So well, let's. Uh, Let's show what a prediction looks like. So, for all the passengers in uh, array, not array, sorry, data frame, the data frame X test, this is whether they, this is whether we think they survived or no. So zero is they didn't survive, and one is they survived. So, um, let's print the classification. Mm, I got it. Classification report of Y test compared to the prediction. Would you look at that? Um, 
it could be it's not exactly the best see yeah um as you can see we've had a you know uh, 0 0.78 precision so 77 78% precision which is basically uh, precision okay okay we need to go over what precision recall um, and uh, F1 score are. Um, so precision is just how many you got correct out of how many there were. That's pretty simple, right? Um, recall and, but you know, sometimes that might not be representative of how, you know, the data is, yeah. Wait, wait, we're not talking about like, we're not talking about that. That's just the precision and the, uh, well, yeah, yeah, that, I, that's right. But in that context, this is just the precision of the values, like the zeros and the ones, the actual prediction. This is like, um, we got, uh, wait, we got, we got, uh, 78% of our predictions correct. That's what this one means in this context, I think. I mean, shoot, not that one. Yeah, hold up. And these should say it. Um, yeah. Uh, that's. Oh, that's supposed to say. That's supposed to be accurate. Or. Huh. No, you're right. Yeah, so, yeah, yeah, you're right. So accuracy is um, all the true positives and true negatives. So let's say, yeah, so, okay, okay, we need to go over the confusion matrix first. So confusion matrix is, oh, okay, wait, let me just confuse you. Ugh. My God, matrix. So, this is what a confusion matrix looks like. So, um, here we have a. Uh, let's let's see this. Okay, so here this is a good example of a confusion matrix. So, what we're looking at here is um, this is the prediction here, and this is the actual. So a true positive is when both are correct. A false positive is when the prediction is correct, but the, no, no, sorry. The prediction is true, but the actual answer is false. And then false negative is when the prediction is false and the actual is true. And then the true negative is when both are Okay, this that was bad wording, you know, not I shouldn't have said false and true. Yeah, so the way they worded it is better predicted. So true positive is yes and um, predicted as yes and the actual is yes. False positive is the prediction is yes, the actual is no. Uh, false negative is predicted as no, actual is yes. And the true negative is predicted as no, actual is no. Yep. Oh, yes, yes, yeah. Mm -hmm. Yep, exactly. Yeah, that. See, that's why there's uh, something called like selective bias in these uh, types of models, where if these models were just trying to fit all the data as best as possible, then you would have some people who are, you know, like Rahi said, you have some people who are false positive and some people who are false negative, but some 
examples don't want that. Some people, some examples, like the one that Rahi brought up for don't want false negatives at all and others might not want false positives at all so you can use selective bias that's where the validation comes in but we're only looking at the training and the testing of the data but yeah that's why you have a validation data set um, so you can look at the train data set and then you could mod modify it according to what kind of selective bias you really want so yeah that Thank you, thank you for adding that. So yeah, um, well we were going over the accuracy. The accuracy is the number of correct predictions over all the predictions. So that's pretty, ac uh, you know, that's pretty obvious. Precision is, if we go back here, number of true positives where it's correct over number of true positives or false positives. Also applies to, well, okay, the precision here was 0.77 so out of all the positives we gave 77% of them were or no well that's that's the negatives out of all the positives we gave 70 79% of them were actual positives the other ones were not um, so recall if we go back here actually I'll bring this into a new tab it's a bit of a pain to view image there we go yeah so Recall is uh, true positives over false negatives. So um, we see out of the people who are actually po um, positive, how many of them, you know, yeah, out of all the people who are actually positive, we see the ratio between which ones were predicted as true and which ones weren't. And this also goes for you know yeah um, so yeah now you can also have specific uh, specificity specificity that's that's a hard word to say but okay yeah so then you can have two negatives over true negatives and false positives so you can see uh, how many of uh, the actual people uh, how many people who are falsely who don't have cancer how many of them you predicted correctly so yeah that's recall and specificity yeah and then um, F1 score is like an all-encompassing combination of the two for lack of better terms so um, let's say yeah so I think Ooh, I kind of see this. It's it has both of them there. Uh, I forgot about the formula. Oh yeah, yeah. It's um two times precision times recall over precision plus recall. So yeah, that's the formula for the F one score. And usually when evaluating the uh, you know how accurate a model or er, not how accurate because that's another term here but how effective a model is usually people use the F1 score because you can get more information from one value and it's less susceptible to uh, to exceptional cases and stuff like that so it's a more accurate outlook on how your model is interpreting the data yeah. um, also very small precision or recall scores. So exceptional scores in the precision or recall will drastically change the F1 score. So um, this is a sort of this is a value that so essentially you know punishes big changes in the uh, how do you, how would you say it? it punishes large changes between the precision and the recall. So yeah, that's pretty much uh, how you say that yeah um, yeah so that's a uh, pretty much it we have a not not bad you know 0 0.82 0 0.71 um, I was talking about validation so how we have the train test split um, we can also have another split there so we can have uh, data split into three parts where um, train 
test val. So val is for validation, where we can use this data to, you know, improve on what we've seen here. But there is a caveat. We do not want to improve too much. I'm pretty sure Rahi covered this in our last lesson, but there is something called overfitting in machine learning models. And um, that would mean that it's the model is so accurate to the training data that it's no longer accurate for any real world examples and the testing data. So it has so many features. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. So it, instead of studying for the test, you're memorizing all the answers of the study guide. <laughs> That's a funny example I heard. Of. Well, I, I mean, it's. Yeah, it, it's sort of like that. Yeah, that's essentially it, yeah. So, yeah, just because, uh, yeah, so there's a fine line between, uh, you know, a model being overfit to a training set or underfit. So, yeah, but we'll cover that in more detail with our future, you know, future lessons. So, yeah, when we talk about you know, KNNs, SVMs, neural networks, all this will come into play. So yeah, but um, thanks for thanks for coming to today's lesson. Yeah, um, we're covering KNNs uh, tomorrow, right? KNN, not KNNs. That's weird. Oh yeah, next week. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. That's that's what I meant. That's what I meant. And all right, cool. So yeah, I'll we'll see you guys next week then. Bye-bye.